Good morning, church. This morning, I would like us to turn to our Bibles, to the book of Luke, chapter 15. We'll read verses 1 through 7. Then all tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he finds he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven, over one sinner who repents, than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Shall we pray? Father, this is your word. This is your time. Speak to us and help us to comprehend the necessity of looking after one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have not given my talk, any topic, so you choose what you want to call it. That's not a good way to begin, but I leave you at liberty to choose what you want to call the presentation. However, what I want to concentrate on is the 1% that Jesus is interested in. The 1% that Jesus is interested in. You see, in the history or in the, in the, the background of this text, is based on this culture where there are, there are many farmers who, and shepherds who would go out either in the fields and so or go out and look after their sheep. And it is in this story, in this parable, that we see Jesus narrating a very interesting story of a sheep. What does it matter to lose just one out of a hundred? And Jesus seems to be so concentrated with the one that is lost than the 99 who are already in. He had a hundred. One is, the, the shepherd had a hundred. One sheep is lost. And he goes after the one as though it was the only that mattered. It was the only one that mattered. You know, every night or every morning as the shepherd went out to look after his sheep, he counted all of them under his rod. And he went and made sure that he was aware of where all his sheep were all the time during the day. But they knew there was danger looming around, either wolves or bears or, sh or lions or whatever would come and attack and take one, snatch one away. There was also danger of losing sight of a wandering sheep who was looking for greener pastures farther away from the eyesight of the shepherd. So in the evening when they came back home, or when he brought back to the crowd, he made sure he counted them once again. This farmer or this shepherd had a hundred of them, but this particular evening as he brought them back home, as he counted them, he counted and he, f he realized one was missing and he thought, maybe I have miscounted. And went back again and counted again. And he realized for sure one is missing. If it was in this culture today, it would have been very easy to say, you know what, I've got a few more. I can leave that one overnight and God look after it tomorrow, for it tomorrow. In the culture we are in, is a culture where we don't repair things. 
your shoe wears out, you throw it. Your car breaks down and is giving you trouble for one week, you go find another one. Your dress is discolored or has some funny thing that has spilled on it, you just throw it, go to the shop and look for another one. You know, when I came into this country, one of the most amazing things was to realize how easy it was to throw than to repair. Because where I came from, if a shoe went, was worn one side, you go to a shoemaker and they would patch it so nicely that you think it's a new shoe. And that's exactly what I did when I landed in Reading and went to a shoemaker. And when I asked him for the, for the cost of repairing a shoe that I thought was going to make it look nicer, the coat was more expensive than the price of a new shoe. And so I felt the best thing to do is just go throw it out, throw it away, come back, buy a new shoe and walk away with it. Friends, this culture teaches us to throw that which we do not need. And unfortunately, it has infiltrated even into relationships. That if you, if, you, if you do things that I don't like, the best thing and the easiest thing for me to do is throw you away, go find another friend. Because it's easier to make a new friend than to repair the old relationship. Because it takes a lot of energy to do it. Look at what Jesus is doing in the story that he tells. He says, this shepherd had hundred. And when he knew that one which was missing was very important because his reputation hung on how careful he was when he was out looking after the sheep. And maybe, maybe in this instance, this, this shepherd was a hired one. So if you lose Mr. X's sheep, you can't go to, mix, to Mr. Q to, find, to, to look after his sheep because your reputation is already under scrutiny. And therefore, this shepherd chooses to leave the 99 safe and secure, goes looking after the one. It wasn't easy task because, number one, it was, it was after a long day of looking after the sheep. In the, in, the, in the fields. So at night, it was inconveniencing for him to be going out to look after for one when he knew the following day he had to take all of them out again into the field. But here now, he said, I am going to leave because the one that is lost is important to me. Even if he was the, he was the owner of the sheep, for him, it was source of income. And to lose one, was costly for him. And therefore, the shepherd goes out. Why did he go out? Three reasons that I have for you this, this morning. One, he had compassion for the sheep. It was important for him to go out looking for the sheep that was lost because he, it, it touched his heart to lose that one. And by the way, in percentage, it's only 1%. He goes out to look for that 1% that was missing. You know, as I was reading the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, all the way to 38, the multitudes are coming to Jesus. And as they come to Jesus... Jesus who is preaching in synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every kind of sickness and disease among people is because, verse 36 says, Matthew 9 verse 36 says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Can you imagine Jesus in his business, what drove him every day, what compelled him to serve and minister was because he had compassion for the lost. He had compassion for the suffering. He had compassion for the needy. And as Christians, we are called 
to have the same compassion over those around us. I suggest number two, the shepherd went out to look for the lost sheep because he knew he was required to put in a lot of effort. And he had to do it. Because where he was going, though it may be, it was a well-known terrain for him. But being at night, it doesn't say there was moonlight and there are torches. But anyhow, he went looking for that sheep because it was important. He put in a lot of effort. What, what makes my heart rejoice is the way when he finds a sheep, he deals with it. You know, when I was young, my father didn't have a hundred sheep. But the few he had, he had taught me how to look after them. But I remember one time as I went out to look after those, the sheep, and I realized there was the naughty one always disappearing. And I thought the best thing is to take it tight down so that it can eat within the surrounding limited on what it could eat on. It had no much choice because the only other choice I had was to do away with it. But I knew my father would ask me to report where it was. And therefore I, I, I took a rope, tied it down, and it was limited on where it would eat from. And when I took them home that night, my father looked at his, at his, his sheep and he said, what happened to this one? Because he knew how that one would always look like when it was well fed. But I've come home and it, 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 the stomach is not fully blown. And he's asking me, what happened to this one? I said, that you, don't, you know, this one was not today. Then he asked me, how, what did you do with it? I said, dad, you know, I thought the best thing is just to take a rope and tie it so that it could, it could eat where I could see it. Then he asked me a question. What did you spend your time on while it was tied? <laughs> of course, as a young man, as a child, the best thing is to use that time to play. <laughs> you know, there are times when we can cut, cut corners when it comes to evangelism. And we don't put effort. We don't go out and look for the lost. We don't bother even looking for those who are getting lost within our midst. Because there are those who we are called to look after. Now, when the shepherd found the missing one, the lost one, he took it and laid it on his shoulders and walked home rejoicing in the night, singing, whistling, because he had found the lost one. And he was sure that his reputation was going to even increase because when men in the village where he had come from would hear that he would leave the 99 to go and look for one, that was a plus for him. How many times have we lost members within our congregation? People we should care for even in our families and we just sit back and say it is their choice. How much more effort should we put to bring them back home to where God is? How much more effort should we put as we look and care for them? Number three, this shepherd was persistent. He was persistent. He, he took time to go and look for. And when he had gone one mile, I don't know, two miles, he did not stop and come back home, which he could have easily chosen to, to do. But he was persistent until he found the lost one. And when he brings it home, he restores that sheep into full fellowship. Hello, church. He brings and restores that into full fellowship. He does not take a rope like I did and tie it aside. He brings it back and counts it among the 99. Then his hundred was full. There are times when we have dealt with those we have lost in our midst. Either by ignoring that they are lost. 
or assuming that they are just going to walk back home. But they may be sheep. This sheep was looking for what it thought was best for itself. But the shepherd knew better. All of us have been called to be shepherds over one another. Look after your brother. Look after your sister. Look after each other as though they are the only ones who matter to you. You know, there are people we have brought back to church and given them difficult conditions even to continue to abide or to stay in the church. Because when they come, the conditions we stipulate for them. They look at them and they realize, you know, my brother, I cannot, I cannot. Because I am so bound. I have no freedom of movement within this congregation. Yet, we, are, we say we have claimed them back. The others we make so difficult for them that when they are gone, they, 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 they think there is greater freedom out there than where they have come from. Church, we have to do something differently. Jesus went out to look for one percent that was lost. Let me share with you some data which is of interest here. I don't know if it's up. A survey was commissioned by the General Conference of why people lose the, leave the church, the Adventist church. And these are the statistics that they discovered. They discovered that many people were lost or left the church because of conflict. I, I'm going straight to that because it's, more, it's very important. Conflicts that Someone has had with a pastor, with a fellow member, with a leader of the conference or leader elsewhere in the local church. And they realized that that was the greatest reason why people left. Now, if you look at the first reason, the first trigger, you find it 62%. Then you have 31.6% as the second reason of their living being conflict. And the third one is 33%, which is that 9.2%. Then other reasons, all those which would include even our differences on how we interpret Bible texts, amounted to 57%. I'm not saying it's something to ignore. But for me, when I looked at this data, I said, God, help us. Because with conflict, there's something we can do. When, a con when I am involved in a conflict with somebody, I know it. It's not something that takes me by surprise. It's not something that I cannot, I cannot help to resolve. But there are times when, when we begin to resolve, we end up with unresolved conflicts and different and parting even ways. Now, between the year 1965 and 2014, this church in this church we baptized membership of 33 million people. The official data today is 18 million, those who are on our records. But within that same period, we lost 13 million individuals. 13 million, that is six, that is huge number. And I'm not sure whether while you sit here and I speak from where I am, whether I, I do not, I'm not aware of someone who has left this church. What have I done for that individual who has left this church. What are you doing? What have you done? Now, amazingly, 10 million of the, of the 13 million who left, left because of conflict. Left because of conflict. Let me share with you um, this data here. This one is between, the, is, is between 2010 and 2014. Between 2010 and 2014, we baptized 5 million in five years, million every year. That's, that calls for celebration. But we lost 3 million. And of the 3 million we lost, 2.5 million are lost because of a conflict. Church, this does not, of course, it requires the Holy Spirit. But it requires us to know how to relate with one another. How we can have compassion for a saved friend. Why would I baptize 10 people 
and seven of eight of them are going out. Rather, five of them are going out. And of the eight, of the five who are going out, who are leaving the church that I'm looking after and you are a member to, four of them have gone out because of a conflict. Does it make sense? Church, this data is seriously, either there's something serious, dangerous with the data, or there's something that is so serious with us that we must look back inward. It's very easy to do a campaign, bring in a thousand. The recent campaign that I saw, which was a record breaker, was in Rwanda a few weeks ago. They baptized 100,000 people people. 100,000 in two weeks. Now, that's a huge number, and I thank God for it. But my fear is, of those, how many are going to come in and leave out the church because of a conflict? I'm not saying this to scare you, but we need to look at the way we deal with one another. And we need to have this in our mind. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 says, For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You were bought at a price. That individual who has come into the church is also bought at a price. The blood of Jesus Christ. And as we deal with them, we need to have that in the back of our minds. How am I dealing with this child who has been paid bought at a priceless, whose, whose value is priceless. Only God's blood could atone for them. I need to look at that. I need to have that and ask myself every day, am I showing compassion as Jesus would? Am I putting effort as Jesus would? Am I caring enough for those who have come in? And as we think of that, May God help you, help me, that we may develop ways of, de of, of relating with one another in a better way as Christ would.